X real, beam me up. A line never actually uttered in the original Star Trek series. Hey folks, X real is sponsoring this video to take a look at the new X real beam. This is a little computer brain for the X real air glasses, and it helps address some of the complaints I've seen in the comments on my videos and other reviews of these glasses. X real sent the beam my way to show off what it could do and share some of my thoughts. I'm a big fan of wearable displays. It's like carrying a movie theater screen everywhere you go and it folds up small enough to fit in a shirt pocket. It's uniquely something that virtual reality or mixed reality headsets can't really replicate. These glasses are super small, great image quality, and being so sleek, it would make sense that you'd really want to use these on the go with other mobile computers, laptops, game consoles, tablets, smartphones. But I catch a lot of frustrated comments from people who do not understand their expensive phone won't properly or easily support a product like this. iPhones, Google Pixel, premium Xiaomi, and numerous other premium phones, not to mention almost all the mid-ranger phones out there. All of these pocket computers are powerful enough to handle a display, but they lack the hardware to put out a video signal. Beam is a way to bring more compatibility to devices that lack proper support for the X-Real Air and includes support for some of the more advanced features on the X-Real. This is basically a mini computer that acts like an interpreter for another host computer. Got a really simple design, little navigation buttons, you got a selector in the middle, there's a back button to help you navigate through the X-Real UI, which is really basic right now. There's a pair of USB-C ports for video input and charging. The other port is for output and it supplies power to the glasses. There's a little control button here on the side and this toggles the different view modes for the glasses. Internally, we've got four gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage to run X-Real software and apps. There's a 4,000 1870 milliamp hour battery which supports 27 watt charging it's little it's light it's compact and this works wired over USB-C or supports Miracast for Android and Windows and Apple AirPlay for iPhones and iPads for wireless streaming this is pretty easy the beam is a Swiss army knife of connectivity. You can connect devices with wired video output that can't power the X-Real glasses, and you can wirelessly connect computers and tablets and phones that can't hook up over a cable. Now, the main feature I've shown off in my glasses videos is the static display with zero head tracking. No matter where you look, you see a big screen fill the center of your field of view. Now, honestly, I think that's enough functionality to recommend a purchase for a lot of people out there, just having a nice big screen. Beam delivers a critical improvement to this experience. Now, any device can use basic three degree head tracking. Say I wanna play a game on my Steam Deck. I can now choose to use zero head tracking and have the image stay in front of me, or I can pin my gameplay to one spot and if I look away, the gameplay stays where I put it. Beam gives us this head tracking with any wired or wireless source. Now, three degrees of head tracking is fun. I think we would call this body relative tracking because the X-Real Air cannot track your whole room, but it will keep apps pinned relative to your body and head. Now, if I'm sitting here in my office and I pin a video over my right shoulder, it'll stay over my right shoulder. Now, if I get up and move to my living room, the video will stay over my right shoulder. More sophisticated six degree tracking for augmented reality will lock a video or a window in space. And no matter where your whole body moves, the window will stay in that space. But even lacking the more sophisticated room scale tracking, there's a practicality here which is really encouraging. Paired with the beam, the experience is smoother so far than what I've used with apps on phones and apps on PCs. Xreal has done a terrific job of lightly stabilizing your head movements. There's just like a subtle delay in the smoother animation. It helps clean up those tiny little jitters that I've seen on the standalone glasses for AR. And this really helps for something like office and PC work. Plugging into my little Windows 11 tablet, I can now create a dual display setup and I can mount 
mount the Xreal display just above my tablet screen. And it's less twitchy looking up and down at my PC and then back up at my virtual monitor. It feels a little more permanent out in space in front of me. It's a really nice effect. And there's also just something great about having a privacy display no one else can see. I like to watch movies while I travel or, you know, when I'm writing a script and I'm down at a coffee shop. I've always been a bit self-conscious about watching things like horror films in public spaces. But now I can dock something really gory in a floating window that only I can see while I work on my laptop screen that other people can see. This extra compute power also gives us a new mode for the X-Real Air. Through the beam, we can minimize the video feed to a tiny little window, just sort of in the corner of our field of view. If you need to pay attention to your surroundings, you can still have like a little ticker display up where you can see what you're looking at. And especially for places where you might not want to walk around with a full mixed reality experience on your face. So I don't know if I would recommend wearing your sort of AR glasses like this all the time. Like, I don't think these are gonna take over as my daily driver sunglasses, but I'm kind of walking around the park right now. I've got my uh, X-Real Beam here connected to the phone in my pocket and I'm streaming some video to the new little side view. And it is kind of nice. Like I've got a little video playing just kind of in the upper corner from my phone. And the rest of my field of view is not blocked by the rest of that image. It's sort of a novel way to play around with video on the go and keep my hands free and then also see what's going on around me. As we include another little brain in our chain of tech, I hope we'll see improved support for apps and services run directly on the Beam. Out of the box in this very early experience, it's mostly focused on connecting other devices. Xreal has committed to bringing more apps natively to the Beam, but at the time this video was produced, the main use is casting and connecting. Getting into the nuts and bolts, the battery life is solid. Streaming video over a Miracast connection for 30 minutes drained the beam battery about 16%, that scaled pretty close to running my laptop display wirelessly for an hour. That drained close to 33, 34%. So I think we should be in good shape for three solid hours of wireless playback with head tracking on, depending on your line of sight between the beam and the host computer. And when you connect to a PC over a cable, the PC will charge the beam, so you don't have to worry about battery life as much. As a totally personal preference, while I get the desire for wireless connections, I prefer the stability and more fluid frame rates of a cabled connection. There aren't many situations where I'd want to stray that far from the host computer and Miracast streaming will always cut your maximum frame rate down. It looks okay when you're just watching some video, but gaming is kind of a no-go. But real quick, back to power management, the charging is kind of slow if you're used to really fast charging phones, but up to 27 watt is a respectable charge speed, all things considered. This is a pretty big battery for such a small shell. And one other important issue to consider, this is a high quality video transferring device. If you've ever used a little USB video capture card, you know that these can get really warm when they're handling all of that information. Say moving video from a camera back into your PC, these can get sort of toasty to the touch. Beam is doing a lot of work like that, and it too can run a bit warm, but there's an active cooling fan to help keep this whole thing manageable. For that better cooling, you might want to be careful how you use this out in hot weather. You probably won't want to leave this in a pocket because that's that's going to block airflow. Thankfully, the fan is really quiet, quieter than the gaming phones or consoles I've used with active cooling, the, the speakers that are built into the X-Real glasses can easily overpower the noise from this fan. I've been using things like this for a couple of years now. I like this combo a lot. This is another critical step in how we can interact with media and apps and computers, and it feels pretty fresh. Now, let's be frank here. Honestly, all of these issues should be easily addressed with how powerful our phones and mobile devices are these days, but we can't wait for manufacturers to include functionality like video output over USB-C and bringing those kinds of features to more mainstream, mid-priced smartphones. So it shouldn't be surprising that glasses manufacturers are making their own solutions to address those emissions. This fills in many of the gaps left by phone manufacturers. 
Now, I still think the glasses by themselves are super handy. You can plug directly into a Switch or a Steam Deck, have a static HD view everywhere you look. You could use them with something like Moto Ready 4 or Samsung Dex or the Honor desktop mode and turn your phone into a super portable PC with a huge screen. No matter how you sit or where you look, you can see this great big screen image. But if we want to get techier and use the head tracking, now we have a more immediate way to include that function with almost any host we'd want to pair with it. Xreal is making a specific choice to use this compute power as a translator between other devices and the glasses. There are other portable devices that supply a simpler video feed or a smart TV kind of solution, but they're not going to supply all of the head tracking stuff. I don't know that there's a right answer yet for how we should be using these glasses or recommending them to consumers. Years after the initial excitement over virtual reality, we're still trying to figure out what gets consumers on board with face computing. Now, this is proving to be a much more difficult transition than previous tech evolutions. We can impress some folks with price. Others are going to want fancy or exotic features, and still others will gravitate to a flavor of practicality. You can definitely score a VR headset for that kind of cash, and it will be a better buy for those more immersive virtual reality entertainment tasks. Or beyond that, someone could go really exotic with a fully contained VR or mixed reality headset, which will be a lot more expensive. I'm gonna do a standalone video on this, but if the hook for a mixed reality or spatial headset is you can use it like another monitor for your laptop, I'm sure a more expensive exotic solution will be fancier and probably provide better support for multi-windowed mixed reality use, but I don't know that it'll be so much better considering the difference in price. Now, stuff like this gets kind of messy and it requires a whole new layer of consumer education, but things like resolution, going up to a 2K plus or a 4K resolution doesn't help your office work as much if that resolution is spread out over a wider field of view. The x -Real have a lower resolution than some of these other options, but they have a more contained field of view. The whole resolution of these OLEDs is packed into a smaller space. Smaller space, tighter pixel pitch, better clarity. So how much resolution does your peripheral vision need if the main draw is working on a floating window from your laptop? Where your eyes focus in front of you, the x -Real Air are matching and sometimes beating the center clarity of more expensive mixed reality headsets with a wider field of view. And this, this is why having these options more broadly available is so critical. As some might scoff at the more streamlined solutions, but they also manage a practical version of what the more exotic gear can do at a much, much lower price. More to that point, all the people that left comments back on my older glasses videos talking about, oh, what a fail that you needed to connect it to a cable, to a phone, and how it should all be self-contained and magically wireless and with perfect connection and high frame rates. But I guess like this using a proprietary cable is fine. Sure, Beam helps us address a number of those complaints while adding more functionality to the x -Real Air. That's a proper step in the right direction, which is where I want to hear from you. I've been talking up wearable displays and heads up displays for a couple of years now. How many of you have tried taking a solution like this out for a spin? We've seen a lot of companies promising exciting new experiences, but if one of the main uses is I can float a big TV in my room where a TV does not exist, well, you could already be doing that now. It's pretty accessible already. So drop me some comments down below. Don't be shy. I want the tastiest of hot takes and maybe smash that bell icon on your way down to comment. Another huge thank you to Xreal for sponsoring these conversations. The space has gotten really exciting over the last couple years, and I think it's still important to play with different competitive options. Make sure there are good solutions for different tastes and different budgets. So I will of course leave more information down below this video in the description on the x -Real Air and the x -Real Beam, their whole lineup of products and software. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, supporting the channel. All of that support lately has been absolutely fantastic. Those of you who are clicking on links or maybe you're checking out my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or you could join the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe.
So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at Some Gadget Guy, basically everywhere. I'm producing my podcast on the Twitch. I'm spending a lot more time on the Mastodons, sharing some photos on the Flickr, a little less so these days on the Facebooks and the Instagrams and the Twitters. And I will catch you all on the next video.